Previously, previously, previously we described the parts per million or the ppm scale that is commonly used to describe the chemical shift when we're dealing with proton NMR spectroscopy. So now we're going to take a look at the following example that deals with this concept. But first, let's recall why we use the ppm scale in the first place. So basically, chemical shift values depend on the strength of the magnetic field of the proton NMR spectrometer that we are using. That is, the greater the magnetic field strength of that proton NMR spectrometer, the greater the observed chemical shift of our hydrogen atom inside our molecule. So this basically implies the following. If two different scientists use two different proton NMR spectrometers that have different magnetic field strengths and they use the same exact compound, those two spectrometers will give us different chemical shift values for that same compound. And this of course is a problem. Now to fix this problem, the PPM scale is used. It basically allows chemists to report the same identical chemical shift values regardless of the strength of the magnetic field inside that proton NMR spectrometer. And to see exactly what we mean by that, let's take a look at this example. Now, usually, instead of designating the strength of our magnetic field inside that proton NMR spectrometer, instead of designating it Tesla's, we basically designate the strength of that particular proton NMR spectrometer in our frequency. So basically, suppose that one chemist uses a 60 megahertz spectrometer and finds that a compound shows a chemical shift of 50 50 hertz. A second chemist uses a 600 megahertz spectrometer and finds that the same compound shows a chemical shift of 500 hertz. So show that the chemical shift given in parts per million is exactly the same in both cases even though the actual chemical shift given in hertz is not the same. So chemist 1 uses a spectrometer that has a lower frequency frequency rating than chemist 2 and so we see that the chemical shift given in hertz is lower as a result but if we convert the two values into parts per million we get the same value as we'll see in just a moment. So the equation that allows us to transform the chemical shift in hertz into ppm is basically given by we take the chemical shift in hertz and divide it by the rating of that spectrometer in Hertz and we multiplied by 1 million and we get the parts per million. So, for chemist 1, chemist 1 found that our chemical shift or the resonance frequency of that particular compound is given to be 50 hertz. Now, the rating of our spectrometer used in that case is 60 megahertz, and we have to convert from megahertz to hertz, so we multiply by 10 to the 6 hertz. And we multiply this by 10 to the 6 ppm and we get, well this is about 8.33 times 10 to negative 7. We multiplied by 1 million and we get 0 0.833. So this is the value of the chemical shift in parts per million for chemist one when he used a spectrometer with this rating and produced a shift of 5 of 50 hertz. Now for the second case we see that our chemical shift was not 50 but rather 500 hertz but our frequency rating was not 60 but 600 megahertz and this is equivalent to 600 times 10 to the 6 hertz. Now we multiplied this by 10 to the 6 ppm 
and if we and if we plug these values into our calculator, we get that it's equal to 8.33 ppm. So we see that in both cases, our ppm value is exactly the same, and that makes sense because we're using the same exact compound. If we use the same exact compound, it makes sense that the spectrometer should give us the same exact chemical shift value in ppm. And that's exactly why we use ppm in the first place. It basically allows scientists or chemists to report the same chemical shift values regardless of the strength of our magnetic field of that particular proton NMR spectrometer.